Hello there and thank you for joining me on this week's edition of Special Assignment. My name is Eddie Nyadwa. And on today's program, I visited the Kenya Medical Training College, that is the KMTC, to speak to the Chief Executive Officer of the institution, none other than Professor Michael Kipto. Now, Professor Michael Kipto is an immunologist by training and he possesses extensive knowledge on research and health, having served in numerous capacities at KEM, that is at, at Kenya Medical Research Institute. Professor, thank you for getting time to speak to us on Lolwe TV. Thank you very much. And uh, Karibu. Asante sana. Uh, first, uh, we are battling corona pandemic. How has it been on your end? Um, thank you very much. Um, the corona pandemic is affecting each and every one of us. It is not a Kenyan uh, problem. It's a global pandemic. And all, all of us are susceptible to this virus. Um, as an institution, we, we are really working to ensure that our staff are following the guidelines that, that have been provided. Even our students, as they stay at home, we make contacts, we talk to them, and we have outreach uh, measures to ensure that at large the community which works or closely lives around us get the information that is required towards COVID prevention. Okay. Now, let's speak about the institution. It has a very rich history, having started way back. Also, we find that KMTC colleges are strategically located next to or within uh, hospitals across the country. Professor, can you highlight to us some of the uh, rich history that this institution portends? Um, Kenya Medical uh, Training College was established in 1927. Uh, at the beginning, you can, uh, if you are very familiar with the Kenyan history, that was during the colonial times. And this was established with the purpose of ensuring the settlers and then could get personnel who would be trained to serve the health needs of that time. Mm -hmm. um, the Kenya government um, uh, moved to a certain level in 1979 where I came to see now became uh, a parastatal through an act of parliament. And due, through that act of parliament, the Kenya Medical Training College was given the core mandate of being the training arm of the Ministry of Health, so that all the mid-level um, health personnel could be trained through Kenya Medical Training College. And that's why you find that all the KMTCs across the country and currently we are in 43 counties mm -hmm. and in the next couple of years we'll be in all the counties. However, you need to note that despite the fact that we are not in all the 47 counties, our presence is there because all our students do their practicals in all health facilities in all the 47 counties. Mm -hmm. So the essence of ensuring that we have presence next to the hospitals is that our training programs are skill oriented and we must ensure that we have a health facility because at the end of the day we are training health workers at the level of higher diploma, diploma, certificates and in short courses. Okay. Now that you mentioned that you're training in very many levels, certificate, diploma and higher diploma and you know medicine is a very lucrative course and many a times when people speak of KMTC the only highlight of the cadre that you teach is uh, clinical officers, lab technicians, nurses. Perhaps, are there any other cadres of training that you are offering at KMTC colleges? Thank you very much. Uh, as a college, at the moment, we have 18 programs and we offer uh, 78 courses at the moment. And uh, why we find that most of us are familiar with uh, clinical medicine, nursing, is because those are the core uh, programs that we offer. Because when you look at the main workers in the hospitals, the first person you'll meet is a nurse. Because basically if you visit any health facility, at the entrance where we refer as triaging uh, uh, table, that's where your temperatures are being taken, the initial uh, examination is being done, is always being done by a nurse. And I think from that 
perspective, yeah. people just know the next person I'll see after nurse is a clinical officer. But bear in mind that there are a number of people who will ensure that the medication that you are given at the tail end, a number of people will have taken one, uh, examinations will have been done, mm -hmm. and that's why now you have laboratory technologists and technicians mm -hmm. whom we also train at both certificate and higher diploma, and that's under the Department of Medical Laboratory Sciences. The other key area is in the area of health records. Because as we're now dealing with technology, all the processes being done in the hospital, we are moving to paperless as a country. So, we so know you'll find that we also, big we, files. yeah, instead of having huge files, we'll ha we have health records experts who are supporting the systems so that we have proper records. Mm -hmm. Even if it is electronic, even if it's still where we still have places where we have files, we need to have officers who are trained in health records. And we have our whole department on health records and information technology. And we train both at certificate and diploma level. The other areas where we do also a lot of training is in medical engineering. All the equipments in the hospitals, starting with uh, x-rays, talk of microscopes, these equipments must be maintained. Think, think even of uh, thermal guns, which are basic equipment just for taking temperatures. They must be maintained. We need medical engineers to do that. And we train them, and they are all over our facilities. The other area, again, we do train is specialist in uh, optometry. And we, when we talk of optometry, which is a new program, which people don't take it, uh, so they don't know much about it, is where these people specialize in uh, the looking at our eyesight. Uh, we operating in terms of classes and so on. So we have a whole program on optometry and our whole department. And just to mention a few, we have also environmental health sciences, which is uh, traditionally the public health. It's a whole department because you need public health specialists. We have to take care of our lifestyle diseases. So we have a program on nutrition and dietetics where we train at certificate, diploma level. And this ensures that um, we ensure that our citizens get information on which foods to take when they're on medication, what do they require. And you find that these cadres all work as a team mm -hmm. to ensure that our health is kept at the highest standard possible. Okay. But I've told you we have 18 programs, so just to mention a few. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining that since you have 18 programs, and uh, all of them are now like 78 courses. You must be having a huge population of students. What numbers are we speaking of? Uh, we have grown fast. We started way back uh, with smaller numbers. But the current population stands at 41,000 across our 71 campuses. Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned earlier is that uh, we are in 43 counties. In some counties, we have more than two. And I want to give an example of uh, Nairobi County. We have Nairobi campus, which is located where we are. We have current campus, and we have Madare. So in Nairobi County, we have three. And in other, an average of two to three. And that's why we have 71 campuses. Professor, today's challenge that the young people are facing is about employability. You find graduates out here still working with their papers, seeking jobs, knocking doors, making applications day in, day out. At KMTC, what is the employability of the students that you churn out annually? Employability of our, stu our graduates is at around 95%. One is because it is uh, hands-based training, it is in the health sector, and we don't only limit employability within this country. If you go to UK, go to the US, Go to Australia, name any, con uh, any continent all over the world, you'll find that we have KMTC alumni mm -hmm. because we don't limit the employability to this country. And if you look at the requirements, and especially when we are talking about universal health coverage, for the government to achieve that, which we play a very key role in terms of providing the human capital required to achieve that. 
So we need at the community level and where we have villages being put together so that because what universal health coverage really uh, the key is to ensure that we do prevention rather than curative. Mm. So all these people will have an opportunity to be employed. The challenge that we have in terms of employability is the fact that most of the counties they may be having challenges in terms of resources but if you visit some of those facilities there is actually shortage of staff. Not because we don't produce enough, mm. it's because the resources are not en enough to employ them. Two, again, our students do not necessarily only work in the government, national and county government facilities. Some of them will go and open their own uh, clinics. I did not even mention earlier that we, are, we, are, we have our own pharmacy department. Mm -hmm. and these are people who will dispense the medicine that we require in all the hospitals. Farm technologists, we train them. Most of them will be able to open their own uh, pharmacies. So they'll go into private uh, enterprises. Medical engineers will be employed by um, uh, companies that pr make this, some of these uh, equipments. They'll be servicing for them. They become sales reps for those uh, companies. So there's an open um, opportunities for our graduates because they have the skills that is required on day to day. Okay. Now that you are in 43 counties across the country, perhaps are there any programs of collaboration that KMTC is making with the county governments where they do operate in? If you look at the expansion for the last five years, this has been made possible by very close collaboration between uh, Kenya Medical Training College and the county governments and the members of parliament mm -hmm. and the governors. Of course, what has happened is that the infrastructure that we have managed to establish in the last five years to a tune of more than 10 billion, we have realized through collaboration with county governments and also the, the members of parliament through national um, CDF funds so that we put up infrastructure and also the county governments do second to us lecturers and we work jointly because at the end of the day our students who are in third year they're actually due to graduate at that level and those students will be able to support the county governments ensuring that the shortages is taken care of because our students as they do practicum they'll be able to actually support the health facilities a good example is when we had strikes of the nurses. It is Kenya Medical Training College which came on board to ensure that the facilities were running and Kenyans still got uh, medication through our own staff who are also well trained. We have medical officers with us, we have clinical officers, we have well trained nurses mm. to the level of degree and the minimum currently in terms of our requirements for teaching is that you must have at least a basic degree in your area of specialization. The area member of parliaments through the CDF will also put in resources to establish KMTCs in their respective constituencies in liaison with the county government. So it's a mutual It's a mutual relationship. relationship. Oh, okay. It's now, oh, Professor Kipto, what has the college done or rather what is the college doing in a bit to align its, uh, its curriculum to respond to the emerging uh, issues like diseases and other things? Uh, when it comes to curriculums, uh, development and uh, reviews, our curriculums are reviewed every three years. And by doing that, we ensure that we bring on board new information that comes mm. so that we are in tandem with new information in the field of science, new information in the field of technology. Because even the equipments that we use, the technology that we use, now we are talking of a, a doctor will be able, through technology, based in the U.S., and be able to do a surgery here in Kenya. So we have now to embrace technology, telemedicine. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we have already introduced in our programs. As we look at emerging and emerging uh, infections, we, ha we also have short courses where we ensure that those people who had even been trained earlier, they can come back, train, and learn new 
uh, technology that has come on board. If there is a case like now, we, we are talking now of COVID, mm -hmm. we, we have already worked very closely with the county government and also the national government to come up with those messages of prevention through delivery by training through community health volunteers. Mm -hmm. And we work jointly with the Minister of Health and also other, other uh, players like AMREF. Okay. KMTC colleges are spread all over the country and you work with communities. You exist within communities. I'm certain even as you seek to expand to all the counties, some communities will be forfeiting their land for KMTC to be constructed. Now, Professor, are you giving back to the community in terms of uh, social corporate responsibility? Thank you very much. Um, we do provide uh, corporate social responsibility through various aspects. One, we ensure first, we ensure that uh, the people from that locality, in terms of when it comes to admissions, for instance, if we have a campus in Lodo, we make sure that 30% of the applicants from that community will be given an opportunity as long as they meet the minimum requirements for our admission, admission criteria. Okay. Two, we also provide um, health training at the community level free of charge, free clinics that we do in liaison with the Ministry of Health and other partners. We also ensure that uh, we train in terms of provision of simple mechanisms like during, especially during the COVID pandemic, we have provided hand washing facilities, more than 191 hand washing facilities from the 71 campuses. And this has gone to the community to ensure that there is opportunity for those, especially in the informal sector, in the markets, where we have a lot of people visiting, we ensure that we provided water tanks, we provided soaps, we provided personnel to man, so that our people are taught on how to properly wash our hands. And that has gone a long way in ensuring that we work so closely with the communities that we stay together. The other advantage, again, which may not be directly uh, corporate social responsibility, remember that when we set up a KMTC campus in a certain locality, yeah. there are a number of things. During the construction, the Mamambogas of this world, and Mamagederis will be able to sell to the people who are working in that uh, construction sites. It will create employment for the people within that community. The provision of hostels is not entirely by us. We allow the community around to put up hostels, so they'll also be earning an income mm. through that. And that will create economic empowerment in those regions, apart from the core mandate, which is really impacting knowledge and skills on medical courses. Okay. Professor, when you came to office in uh, 2018, you were vibrant and you had this huge vision where you wanted to drive the institution towards. However, come 2020, COVID-19 has struck. Post-COVID, where do you see KMTC colleges? Um, with COVID or no COVID, our momentum is still intact. One, despite the issue of COVID coming in place, I can give you the assurance that our teaching is going currently as we talk through uh, e-learning. We have put a robust e-learning platform. Mm -hmm. We have put high-speed internet uh, provisions. We have trained our lecturers and our students are actually being taught. We are opening for September intake on 15th next month for new students and we'll train them. So we still have our processes intact despite the fact that we have COVID. Of course, there are challenges in the sense that our courses are practicum oriented. Yeah. But our strategy is we take advantage of this time to teach all the theories. And then come next year when things normalize. And when I talk normalize, COVID will still be there. But at least we'll have flattened the curve. And that will allow our students to go to the health facilities mm -hmm. to undertake their practicals. Mm -hmm. And bearing in mind that there will be no KCSC 
this year. Then we have the whole of next year to ensure that all our students whom will have admitted next month will be able to do their practicums. And between now and December, we engage them through e-learning. They do continuous assessment tests. They do assignments. And this will ensure that our students are kept busy so that we don't end up with issues where we are finding now as a country a lot of reports of um, drug abuse mm. you talk of high increase in pregnancies we want to ensure that as an as a college we don't allow that to happen to our students um, the other thing that we are looking forward is that um, despite again this pandemic in terms of our plans uh, that we need to move this institution to the highest level where that will be the best in the region. And by the way, we are the best in the region as we talk now, because we produce the highest number of graduates at the mid-level uh, training. For instance, the 2019 graduation, we had more than 12,000 graduates. That's a huge number. And this is a target that will ensure. And at the same time, we are not just looking at the numbers. Mm. We are looking at what kind of a product are we producing. Because these are people who will go and work in the health facilities. Tomorrow, I'll, God forbid, if I become sick, I'll visit a health facility. These are my products. I have to make sure that they, they have skills and competencies that they'll be able to treat me and I come out of that sickness. Okay. Lastly, Professor, we've seen a few cases of ethical, a few ethical issues in the medical field where you find that people masquerading to be doctors, yet they're not doctors. How seriously are you teaching your students the issue on ethics? What we do is that um, the first thing that we encourage our students is that uh, ethics is a huge uh, topic that cuts across all the programs, be it medical imaging, be it radiology, be it clinical medicine, be it nursing, be it even health systems. We encourage that ethics is a very fundamental uh, issue in medicine. And remember that during their graduation, they take an oath that they'll protect. However, you may find in the, in the industry that you may get one or two individuals who may want to masquerade. It's unfortunate. But what we do also is that, remember, after the training, there are other statutory bodies, for instance, Nursing Council of Kenya, who will issue the certificates for practice. Mm -hmm. Clinical Officers Council, we will issue the certificate for practice. You think of medical laboratory sciences, we have Kenya Medical Laboratory and Technicians Boards, who will issue practicing certificates. And all our students that we have trained none of them has failed the examinations to be issued with practicing certificates. And we are confident that they are doing the right thing wherever they are, and that's why our students are being looked for all over the, all over the world. I can tell you that we have institutions from Australia whom they are actually collaborating with us mm. in the US because they have realized that our students are of high quality in terms of training. And that's why, we, as a college, we are looking to export. If Cuba are exporting, mm. uh, this country, we brought in Cubans to come and support us. We should also be in a position to export this work, workforce. They'll go and work there as expatriates, and they'll blow back the money. Yeah. And this country will develop economically. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, that has been Professor Michael Kipto, the Chief Executive Officer of KMTC Colleges here in the country. Thanks for watching and bye-bye for now. My name is Eddie Nyadwa.